recognize this man? He's Harry, a very special Hornet prospect. And he's a bit of a problem. The trouble with Harry is he's got Maverick on his mind. You can recognize Harry several ways. He may be driving a Maverick when he shows up at your dealership. Or while looking at the Hornet, he may start thinking out loud. Hmm, I'm just wondering how this car stacks up with the Maverick I saw yesterday. When you ask your prospect, what have you seen that caught your fancy? And he answers, Maverick. Then you know you're dealing with Harry. Harry is not entirely sold on Maverick. He needs someone to show him how to make a better decision. And that's where you come in. You'll give Harry some second thoughts when you show him the Hornet. But it's not easy. Look what you're up against. Harry already has a rosy picture of Maverick. Who put it in his mind? Most likely, a salesman. Could be all the time you're showing the Hornet, Harry's recalling the guy who had his ear last. But you can win him over. After all, you've got Hornet's power, room, easy handling, and equipment advantages on your side. It's up to you to drive home a comparison that just won't leave any room in Harry's thoughts for that other guy and his Maverick. Let's take a look at some of Maverick's selling points that may have impressed Harry. We'll let that Maverick salesman have his say first. But when it gets to a point where Maverick just doesn't bear comparison with Hornet, we'll blow the whistle on him. That'll be the signal for you to set Harry straight. Shut off the machine and give yourself a moment to decide what you'd tell Harry to change his thinking. Take a look at your folder on Hornet versus competition if you want to, then switch on the machine again. All set? Round one. Harry, you're looking at a maverick. A real loner that upsets a lot of traditional ideas on style, performance, and room. I want you to see for yourself. This car has something special under the hood. Maverick's got something special, all right. An old-fashioned prop rod to hold the hood up. Frankly, it's a nuisance to use. Hornet's hood is counterbalanced to stay up by itself. No rod, no bother, no interference. Just a little example of how less can be more. I'm talking about engine power, Harry. Instead of those little engines you get on imports or the four cylinders offered on some compacts, Maverick's got six lively cylinders with 170 cubic inch displacement. Keep in mind, Harry, that's the standard engine, and it unleashes 105 galloping horses. Maverick's standard engine is a six. And so is Hornets. And that's about all they have in common. Compare size. 199 CID on Hornet, 170 on Maverick. Naturally, Hornet's heftier engine gets up more power. 128 horsepower compared to Maverick's 105 galloping horses. What kind of a race is that? Another thing, Harry. If you want to move up to a bigger engine, Maverick's got it. A 200 CID optional six. Maverick's engine option, the only one it has, lets Harry move up to about the same size as Hornet's standard six. Harry can really opt for more size and power with Hornet. There's a 232 CID six with one barrel or two. Harry gets a choice. And if he has a mind to go deluxe, the Hornet SST offers a V8. There's no V8 option on Maverick. As a matter of fact, Maverick doesn't even have a deluxe model. Now let's take a look inside. Maverick breaks the rule on roominess too, by giving you more of it. Notice you have plenty of shoulder room, 
Nine inches more than you'd get on the top mini import. Maverick has plenty of room for your friends, too. Just think. Two in the back, two in the front, and everybody's comfortable. Like the man said, Maverick is a four-passenger car. Hornet is a five-passenger car, and that's worth explaining. Actually, both cars have about the same roominess in front. When you compare front headroom, leg room, and all that, the biggest difference is Hornet's extra inch of hip room. But call it a draw. The real difference is in the back. Hornet has room for three adults in the back seat. Maverick's back seat is meant for two people, and with good reason. Any more could end up with a jawbone connected to the hip bone. Because hip room in the back of the Maverick is only 46.1 inches. Hornet's rear seat passengers get over 8 inches more. It's not that Hornet's a wider car. Overall width is about the same. It's the room inside that's different. On Maverick, the rear axle is located so far forward that the wheel wells crowd the back seat. So Maverick's passengers have to compete with the inside of the wheel well for space. And the passengers always lose. Harry, you didn't ask why Maverick has no glove box. But I'll tell you anyway. Because it has a full-width package tray instead. Just think. Room for papers, maps, glasses, etc. And all in easy reach. It has a glove box with a door on it. It's a place to put away valuables and papers that are nobody else's business and to keep the maps, glasses, etc. out of sight. Of course, a package tray can be handy, but only if you have a glove box, too. That's what the Hornet SST has, both. Speaking of room, Harry, Maverick's trunk is downright generous. 10.4 cubic feet. There's room for suitcases, golf bags, the works. Nearly three times the space on some of those imports. Hornet's luggage space measures just over 11 cubic feet. It's not exactly bottomless, but it's a good deep trunk. Maverick's trunk is slightly smaller, and in a way, it is bottomless. Under the mat where you'd expect to find the floor of the trunk, you'll find the top of the gas tank. Really? Now, don't be misled by Maverick's roominess, Harry. When it comes to easy handling, all the small car advantages are more so on Maverick. It'll park in spaces you never used to notice were there. It may not look it, but Maverick is actually less than 15 feet long. Most of the compacts are about a foot longer. Get the picture? Hornet and Maverick are the same length, down to the last rounded off tenth of an inch. But as the saying goes, it's not how long you make it, it's what you do with the length you've got. On Hornet, 108 inches go into the wheelbase, where they count for maximum riding comfort. Maverick's wheelbase is five inches shorter, a real come down in comfort. Talk about maneuvering in traffic. Maverick can turn in a circle less than 36 feet across. Not even the leading import has a turning circle that small, let alone the compacts. Hornet's turning circle is bigger by four-tenths of one foot. We blew the whistle anyway because turning circle alone is no proof of easy maneuvering. It doesn't take into account how much room beyond the wheels a car needs to turn in. Overhang tells you that. Total overhang on Maverick is about 76 inches. On Hornet, a good five inches less. If you've ever tried going through a doorway with your umbrella up, you know how a little overhang cuts down maneuverability. I'll sum it up in two words, Harry. Easier driving. That's what you look for in a small car. And that's what Maverick has in every way. Hmm, what about power equipment?
However our maverick salesman answers that one, he's not going to offer Harry power steering or power brakes. Maverick just doesn't have them. Harry can order either one or both on Hornet. Even power front disc brakes are available. Let's get down to the nitty gritty, Harry. 1995 isn't 25 years from now. It's today's price for Maverick. You could pay over $400 more for some compacts, but you needn't spend a dime over Maverick's starting price because it's all there. Manufacturer's suggested retail price always gets an asterisk to allow for extra costs. On Hornet, the starting price is smaller, and so is the asterisk. Maverick's asterisk has to cover more extras, like dealer preparation charges and special safety features required by state law. And then there's basic equipment. With Hornet, Harry can take 14-inch wheels and tires for granted. They're a socket to him item on Maverick. Maverick is fully outfitted with seat belts, for safety's sake. Can't beat that. Maverick seat belts are the kind that let it all hang out. For safety plus convenience, Hornet seat belts are the retractable kind. Anything worth doing is worth doing right. You get up-to-date hardware, like pull-out door handles for a smarter-looking, safer interior. Hornet has pull-out handles, too. Inside and outside. Why quit when you're ahead? Well, uh, have you seen our plastic grill? Let's let that one go by. He's had enough of the whistle. As for Harry, the next time you see him, do him a favor. Bring out the comparisons that take Maverick off his mind and put him on to a really good thing. When you compare price, power, roominess, and... Just a minute. About that power equipment. On a car that handles easily anyway, uh, power equipment is a luxury. That's what I was thinking. On Hornet, I can get the convenience of a small car in luxury, too. Maverick? Well, it's a nice little car, but it's not a little rich car.